Hi, my name is Brian Smith. In this video, I'm going to cover Cockpit and RHEL 8. Cockpit is a web-based system management tool for RHEL and has seen several significant improvements in RHEL 8. You can easily complete many common tasks from the Cockpit web interface in RHEL 8, including many storage tasks, networking tasks, adding and removing users, starting and stopping services, accessing a terminal, and many other tasks. Cockpit is self-contained, so there's no web server you have to configure or set up. And getting started with Cockpit in RHEL 8 is very easy, as it's now part of the RHEL 8 default repositories, and it's automatically installed and the required firewall port is open on, a nor on most normal installations of RHEL 8, except for minimal installations. Note, however, though, that even though Cockpit is installed by default in most cases, it's not started by default, so you still have to manually start it. If you're on a minimal installation and need to install Cockpit, you can easily do that by running yum install Cockpit. Um, on this system, it's already been installed when the system was installed. Um, you'll also want to make sure that the firewall port is opened, um, port 9090. Um, we'll run a firewall CMD minus minus list all here and verify that the Cockpit service is included in our firewall configuration. There's also been a change. When, when you log in to RHEL 8 with a user account over SSH, um, you'll see a message displayed here if the cockpit web, web interface is not enabled and it'll give you the command you can run to enable it. So we'll go ahead and run this command systemctl enable dash dash now cockpit dot socket and now if we log out and log back in again this message will be changed to show the URL um, that you can use to access the cockpit web interface, either the host name or the IP address. We'll go ahead and right click here and say open link, which will bring up a web browser. By default, cockpit uses a self-signed certificate, so we'll go ahead and accept um, the certificate. And from here, um, we can log in with any RHEL user account. We'll also want to check this box down here, reuse my password for privileged task. This will allow Cockpit to use my account's sudo permissions to do privileged task on the system. Go ahead and click log in. And you can of course also log in with the root account as well, so we'll show that as well. and here we are logged in as the root account. Over on the left hand side here we have several menu items that we can uh, access. We'll start on the system menu item. From here we can see hardware information if we click on this link. We can also see operating system information. Um, we can even join a domain if we click the join domain button. We also have the option to shut down or restart the server with an optional message to users and a delay. And then down below we have performance graphs on CPU, memory, etc. If we click on the link, we can see a larger graph. Next, if we click on the logs menu option, we can see system logs. And we can also filter based on uh, date and the severity of the uh, log message. Next, we'll look at the storage menu option. If we go there, um, we can see performance information about disk activity. We can see file system sizes and usage. And we can also see file system logs. And we can see information on RAID devices, volume groups, video devices, iSCSI targets, and the physical drives. In this example, we're going to increase the root file system um, in size. So we'll go down to volume groups and click on the volume group and we can see that the volume group currently has 19 gigabytes of uh, space allocated. We'll click the plus sign next to physical volumes, click the check for dev SDB, and click add. This is going to add this physical volume to the volume group, and we now have 39 gigs of space available. We'll go down to logical volumes, click the drop down, and for the root file system we'll click grow. From here we can use the slider to set the size, or we can just type in a number. We'll type in 30 gigabytes and click grow, and just like that, the file system was increased in size. We'll go back here and verify that it's now 30 gigs in size. Next, we'll look at the networking menu item. From the networking menu, we have the option to manage the firewall. If we click on the rules here, we can see the current rules that are listed. And if we click Add Services, we can add additional firewall rules. Let's say we want to open the um, port 443 for HTTPS or port 80 for HTTP. We just select those and click Add Services. And then we can also easily remove these if we wanted to by clicking the little trash can icon. 
can also toggle the firewall on or off. And we'll go back to networking. Um, from here, we can manage interfaces. If we click on the interface name, we can see that this is set for DHCP, but we could also change that to um, other options. And then we also have the option to add a, a network bond, and select the members, select the mode, etc. And we have the option to add a bridge and several other options here. And we can also see the network logs down at the bottom. If we go to the accounts menu item and click on an existing account, um, we can change the password for the account or we can add a public SSH key for it, or we can go back and click create new account, uh, type in a username and a password, and then click on the create button, and this will add a new rel uh, user account. And if we go back and uh, click on that user at this point, we can also Click this to add it to the wheel user group, make it a server administrator. And we also have the option to change the password if we'd like. Next we'll go to the services menu option here. From here we can see all the system services that are on the server. In, the ex in this example we'll go down to the OpenSSH server daemon, click on that. And then we have the option here to see the logs for that daemon. And we also have the option to stop. Uh, SSH and we can also disable it so it doesn't start at boot and then of course we can also go back and click enable to enable it to start at boot again and then we can click start to go ahead and restart the service at this point. Next we'll look at the applications menu item. This list other cockpit plugins that have been installed um, right now we don't have any installed so there's none listed. We'll go down to Diagnostic Reports. This will allow us to create an SOS report. Um, once we click Create Report, it'll uh, generate the SOS report and give us an option to download it. Next, we'll go to Kernel Dump. This gives us the, gives us the option to enable or disable KDump and do some configuration on it. Next, we'll look at SE Linux. This lets us see um, SE Linux access control errors and also gives us the option to toggle SE Linux on or off. Next we'll look at the software updates uh, option. Um, on this system it's all up to date, um, but normally it give you the option to install updates if there were pending updates. Next we'll look at subscriptions. From here you can see if the subscription status is current or not. Um, you can also see the list of installed products. And then finally you can also access the terminal on the server where you can do any command from the command line. One of the improvements with Rel8 and Cockpit is an improved mobile um, browser interface. We're going to emulate what a phone web browser would look like by using the responsive design mode um, within Firefox. So we'll go ahead and click that. And you can see it'll work in a either a vertical um, interface or a horizontal interface. From here, we'll show a couple of things you can do. Um, we'll go up to System. And you can, of course, review the performance graphs. You could restart the server. Um, you can manage storage. Um, we'll even go down here and we'll grow the root file system again. So we'll click, click there, click grow, and then increase the size of that. And we can also go through to an account, um, click on an account name, and then we could easily change the password. So lot, lots of uh, pretty cool stuff you can do through the mobile interface. We'll go ahead and switch back to the regular web browser at this point. The menu options you see over here on the left depend on what packages you have installed. If we switch back over to the command line and run yum search cockpit, we can see a list of cockpit related packages. Not, of all, not all of these are installed by default. Um, a couple of note are Cockpit Composer. This allows you to create custom RHEL images. There's also Cockpit Session Recording. 
this allows you to set up um, recording where when people log in on SSH, it records what they're doing. There's also cockpit machines. This allows you to manage virtual machines through cockpit. And there's cockpit dashboard. This allows you to connect to remote servers and manage um, them through cockpit as well. In this example, we're going to go ahead and install the cockpit session recording. And we'll also install T-Log, which is the an, another package required for session logging. We'll go ahead and say yes here and let those install. And then if we switch back to the web interface and refresh, we can see that there's now a new uh, menu option on the left for session recording. So I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you get a chance to try out Cockpit for RHEL 8. Um, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope you have a great day today.